Hi everyone, this is Andrew Tan. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to sideload the game Genshin Impact on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So I'm actually recording this on my 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip, but this is going to apply for any Apple Silicon Mac, especially those that work on Monterey. Because the new MacBook Pros released in 2021 don't have the ability to downgrade back to Pixar 11.2.3 when sideloading was still available, then this is going to be the only method that works and allows you to get Genshin Impact working. So thankfully we have a really good method developed by a coder called iVoider and they've created a piece of software called PlayCover which allows sideloading and today I'm going to be showing you how to use this software and to download and install Genshin Impact version 2.3 and get it working on any Apple Silicon device. So I do have a previous tutorial video of how this works and this is basically going to follow many of the same steps however they're going to be slightly updated as this video was made at a very early alpha stage and a lot more development work has happened since August 2021 and the development and the community have really progressed since then. Also just bear in mind that a lot of the instructions that I'm going to be writing are going to be updated on the play cover article on the Apple Gaming Wiki website and I'll leave a link to this in the description. So the first thing that we need to do is to go to the playcover.me website and this is going to be the place where we download the play cover software. So I'm going to click this download for Apple Silicon here. I want to download PlayCover 0.9.1, which at the time of recording is the current latest version. Once I get to my downloads folder, I'm going to double click on this PlayCover zip to extract it. So now I'm going to double click on the folder and I've got PlayCover here. I'm going to drag this to my applications folder so I can install it fully. So I'm going to go to my applications folder and I've got PlayCover here. Here I'm going to double click on it. If you get this error that the software can't be opened, all you need to do is go to system preferences and then go to security, go to the general tab and then click open anyway. Here it's telling us it can't be opened, but we're going to over write this by pressing open here. So now we have the play cover software open. So just be aware that if you use any of these links, some of them are going to be out of date. For example, this Genshin Impact Global 2.2 is the one that you're going to get if you click on this link. Therefore, we're going to need to go to the Discord in order to get the latest decrypted version of Genshin Impact 2.3, which just released. So this is the Patreon page for play cover. So I do recommend that if you have a little bit of spare cash to at least join the Dolphin level of support. This will help to further develop the play cover software and it'll help to make sure that side loading is always going to be available for Apple Silicon Macs, whether it's right now or into the future as well. This is because side loading is a bit of a cat and mouse game and it requires constant development. And if you do become a member, you'll get access to some of the special chat rooms in the Discord server as well. So in order to get to the Discord, all we need to do is to go to the playcover.me website and in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, we have the link to the Discord invite. Just click on this and we'll get access to the playcover server. And what we need to do is to go down to the decrypted IPAs channel. So we have to use decrypted apps in order to run these on PlayCover. So I'm going to be using this first link here in order to download Genshin Impact 2.3. So now that I've downloaded my Genshin Impact version 2.3.0, which is the latest version at the time of recording, I'm going to click on this add app here, and then I'll go to my desktop and I'm going to add Genshin Impact version 2.3.0. So now that Genshin Impact is installed, we're going to have to follow these instructions and disable system integrity protection. Now I know that this is going to be quite a contentious issue for some people, so I don't recommend doing this if you feel unsafe about disabling system integrity protection, because this is an essential part of Mac security. I do know for a fact that a version of PlayCover is soon going to be released, which does not require disabling system integrity protection. So if you do feel like this is a deal breaker, then please wait a few more weeks for a SIPless version to be released. So at this stage, what we need to do is to disable SIP. And in order to do this, we have to shut down the computer first and then enter the recovery mode. So once the computer is shut down, we're going to have to enter recovery mode. So what we're going to do is to press the power button and then we're going to hold it until we enter the recovery menu. So I'm going to press this power button and I'm going to hold it to switch it on and then make sure that the recovery menu comes up. It says here, continue holding for startup options. Now it's saying loading startup options. You can actually let go of your finger now once it says that. So we're now in the recovery menu. What I'm gonna do is click the option button here and press continue. And we're now in the recovery menu. What we need to do is to click on our user and click next. Then we're gonna type in our password and press continue. And now we've reached the full recovery menu. What we need to do is to go into terminal. So we need to click on the utilities menu bar at the top here and then select terminal. So the command we need to use is csrutil disable. So I'm going to leave this code in the description of this video, but it's basically csrutil space disable. And here I'm going to press return. And it's saying here that turning off system integrity protection is modifying the system security. It can potentially allow for malware to be installed on this computer or a virus. So just be aware of this. 
If you're doing this, make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Here we're going to press Y and then return. And then it's asking for an authorized user. We're going to type in our username for the computer. This is the username for my computer. It's normally the first name, last name by default, or it could be something different for you. You can check in your user settings in the Mac operating system. Here we're going to press return. And here we'll type the password. When you do type it in, you won't see any characters because this is terminal. However, when you've typed it in, you can just press return. It will be entered in the background. So it'll take a few seconds for this to be disabled. So now that this is complete, we can now restart the machine for SIP to be disabled. I'm going to click on the top left hand side here and click restart. So once we've disabled system integrity protection, we can confirm this by clicking on the top right hand side here, typing the word terminal, going to the terminal application. So I'm going to type in the command CSI util space status. When I press return, it's telling me that the system integrity protection has been disabled. And so we can move on to the next step. So here I'm going to reopen the play cover application. And here I'm going to click on Genshin Impact. Here I'm going to click Enable Play Sign. I'm going to type in my local user password. Now it's saying here I need to restart my Mac and then restart my computer. So I've now restarted the computer and I'm going to open up PlayCover once again. So here we're going to open up Genshin Impact. And now the main software has loaded. I'm going to log into my account. Agree to all of the terms. Accept. Select my server. Confirm. Then start game. So now that the update has downloaded, I'm going to click Tap to begin. We're going to just going to download all of the full resources of the latest update. So once you've logged into the game, one of the first things that you want to be able to do is to map the controls. So I'm going to leave a link to the playcover.me FAQ. This contains all of the keyboard information that's up to date. So when you actually log in, what you need to do is press the control P button. And what that does is that enables the key mapper tool. So this black bar comes up and this allows us to map the keys to the touchscreen controls. So the most important thing is that we press control J and this gives us the WASD movement controls. So we can put that over our left hand side movement there. Next thing we do is press control N and I'm going to map the left mouse button here. If you want to increase the size of this, what you can do is press the control button and then plus to increase the size. Next, I'm going to add more buttons. Here, I'm going to add a new button for jump. And once you've clicked on a button, what you can do is to remap it just by pressing the correct key. And then that space button is now the jump button. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to add a new button, which is going to be the right mouse button, which is going to control the alternate fire. And in order to map the left or right mouse buttons, you have to press Shift L or Shift R. So I'm going to press Shift R here, and that's going to change that to the right mouse button there. And the last thing I'm going to do for now is to add the mouse movement. So I'm going to press Control M. And I'm going to put this on the kind of top of the screen here. And that kind of represents when you swipe on the screen with your finger. So now that we've done the basic setup here, I'm going to press Control P. That's going to disable the overlay. And then we can go ahead and use the keyboard controls in order to play the game. So I've got my mouse on the right hand side and I've got everything mapped how I want it at the moment. If you want to be able to focus on other elements of the screen, you can press the option key and that will toggle the mouse cursor so you can go and interact with your settings. I've turned the graphics onto the highest with 60 frames per second. Uh, 120 hertz should be available in the future, but basically I can come out of this and then if I want kind of direct access to the game, what I can do is to press the option key again and I've got my mouse control back. So here as well, it's quite useful. I can actually press the green button here to do a full screen. This is running in 16 by 9, 1080p. I've also bound the character keys, etc., so that we've got all of the shortcuts as there. You can definitely customize this further if you wanted to. So if I wanted to get the controller to work, all I need to do is to make sure that my Bluetooth controller is paired to the Mac operating system. Then what I can do is go into the menu here and I can go to the settings. I can change the control type to controller and then everything's just going to bind correctly. So we don't have to do any of these key map toggles. We just go ahead and control the game directly through the controller like so. And it's all going to be bound and mapped correctly for you. So overall, I'm very impressed with the side loading tools and you know how mature it's become and how bug free it is now. So all of the control rebinding is much better than it used to be. And uh, it just works much better than before. And I can see that this just works much more reliably than it used to. And it's a definitely a very good way of making sure that games like Genshin Impact can be sideloaded. And even these new 16 inch MacBook Pros with the M1 Max chips can still sideload these games, even though we're not running on Big Sur anymore. This is still going to be a reliable solution going on into the future. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. It is definitely the best and actually only way to sideload applications at the moment on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, especially on the M1 Pro chips. And everything that we've done with Genshin Impact, we can also 
also apply to other decrypted applications as well. I'll be doing some testing on this in the future. The real main issue we have to contend with is that system integrity protection has to be turned off in order for this to be able to work. However, I know for a fact that iVoido has already discovered a solution which is going to allow us to be able to silo these applications without disabling system integrity protection sometime in the near future. Once that becomes available, I'll be sure to make a video about it then. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.